What does the phrase, it's never too late, really mean? My name is TK, and in this series, I'm hoping to shed light on how individuals rise above, own their realities, and overcome obstacles. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that people are not able to look past mistakes despite witnessing one's emotional pain? This season, I'll be interviewing individuals in different areas and industries to explore their sometimes controversial views and why they feel it's never too late to change, follow their dreams, and walk in purpose. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. It's your girl, TK. And we have a very exciting topic today called dealing with chronic pain. So excited to jump into that with all of you. If you're new to the podcast, you're a new listener for the first time or you're returning, make sure that you rate and review the podcast. It does make it more discoverable for others. And then also feel free to engage with me on social media. I want to hear from you guys. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Just search for Back and Forth TV. And you'll find us there. Just make sure you like, follow, share, and comment. And yeah, definitely want to hear what you guys think. Today on the show, I have Dr. Lauren Penn with me. Welcome. Thank you. It's Welcome to the to show. Here. Yes. I appreciate it. And um, she's going to be talking to us about, you know, chronic pain and, and better and alternative ways to deal with that. So I'm excited to dive into that topic. Before we get started, though, I do... Um, want to um, just read a little bit about her, um, just so you guys know. So Dr. Lauren Penn, she's a chiropractor, inspirational speaker, health practitioner, and charismatic and impactful community leader who is building a thriving chiropractic practice in Colorado Springs area. She brings more than 30 years of hands-on diagnostic treatment and holistic health care experience to her practice. She is quickly becoming the chiropractor you go to after you've tried everything else. I like, she, I like to work with hard cases, she says. People who have been to other or more traditional practitioners without getting the results they want. Having worked with, as a surgical technologist. Is, did I say that correctly? Yes, surgical sure. technologist. Okay, that's different. For 30 years in various hospital settings, Dr. Penn treats her patients with a unique blend of knowledge, practical advice, caring, and intuition. She is an artistic scientist. Dr. Penn was born in San Jose, California, the youngest of five children. Her father spent his entire career with General Motors at three different plants around the U.S. Her mother worked various jobs while raising the children. Dr. Penn has a bachelor's degree from Regis University in Denver and a degree in chiropractic from Parker University in Dallas. She is a mother to 25-year-old son Malik, who also lives in Colorado Springs, in fact, it was some health issues that her son faced earlier in his childhood that drove her to seek better health care options and holistic care options outside of the traditional system. She decided to build a chiropractic practice out of her desire to help more people get better health outcomes without resorting to prescription of pharmaceuticals. Excuse me. In her practice currently, Dr. Penn looks at the whole patient, their medical issue, their emotional state of mind, their fitness, their nutrition, and designs comprehensive and unique treatment plans to address those issues and get the patient to a resolution. Her office is located in the Fountain Boulevard Corporate Center, 3595 East Fountain Boulevard, Suite 200 in Colorado Springs. And right now she is accepting new patients. So welcome, Dr. Penn. I'm excited to have you here today. Now, I always start with an icebreaker question. You know, before we dive in, okay. <laughs> and I'm excited to ask you this one because you're so full of personality. <laughs> um, what would be your spirit animal and why? I have had this question asked before. It is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to take the easy easy road. Mm -hmm. It's not an animal, so I apologize, but it's an insect. Okay? I would be a butterfly. See, I knew you were going to say something different than what I expected. <laughs> I thought she was going to say like an actual animal. <laughs> She's like it's an insect. <laughs> and the reason why is 
animals, they don't really transform. They, they have a progression of life. Mm -hmm. They're babies, then they're learning their way through life, and then they're adults. Butterflies transform themselves mm -hmm. time and time and time again, mm -hmm. right? You start off as this little larva, then you become this little caterpillar, and then you become this butterfly. And all the, though the life expectancy is not very long unless you are a Methuselah butterfly, you transform, mm -hmm. you adapt, you overcome. And at the end of the adapting and overcoming, you become this beautiful pollinator. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I would be an insect, but if I had to choose <laughs> elephant, wise, beautiful, mm -hmm. majestic. My dad used to say, the lion's not the king of the jungle. The elephant is the king of the jungle. That's different. Mine would probably be, I've always loved horses. And when I get old and retire, I want to be on a ranch with some horses. Okay. Um, I think that they're very regal and majestic. Oh, absolutely. And beautiful. Um, I also say maybe like half lion, <laughs> you know, because they're just. You know, they're hungry. They'll eat you alive. And that's kind of me, too. That's only that's only the lioness. <laughs> the the male lion, he's like, lady, go, don't give me that food. <laughs> Have my baby. Spread my seeds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, welcome to the show again. I'm Thank excited you. to have you here, finally, because I know we kept going back and forth with the schedule thing. So now I got you here. So I was like, I'm definitely going to get her in today for sure. Um so before we dive into chronic pain and all that stuff, you know, you're a doctor, first of all. I am. And black female doctors are unicorns. Yes, How we did are. we get here? How did you become a doctor? I got here by a windfall. Mm -hmm. I, Malik, who from the time that he was six months, he got a six month shots until he was about four, had a lot of skin problems. Mm-hmm. And I was already a surgical technologist. I was in the military, and that's how I got my training. And I just kept learning more about herbs and essential oils. Mm -hmm. And then people started asking me over a span of decades, really. You know, what do I need to take not to take pain medicine? What do I need to take to resolve this issue? What do I need to take this? I'm constipated, you know. And then I just looked at different patterns on what people may be eating or what could be causing them pain. I was at the turning point where I was at the end of my career and be, as being a surgical technologist. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to go to nursing school. I thought I was going to be a nurse practitioner that was a herbalist. And when it was my turn to come up for nursing school through, through a um, hospital program, mm -hmm. the director denied my paperwork. And I was astounded because there's rules that there's rules that are supposed to be followed. Mm -hmm. um, you're not supposed to get written up in the amount of time that it, your paperwork comes across the desk, and you're not supposed to have any really disciplinary actions. And I and I didn't. So when she denied my paperwork, they had this institution or this particular director had compiled a lot of what she said were complaints. And basically said to me, you know, nobody likes working with you. And I was just like, no, nah, I can't go to nursing school. And everybody hates working with me. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a lot of information. Oh, yeah, that was a lot of information. And it had been, that was in 2012 when that happened. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, you have one year. And I was like, I've been down this track before because I had been fired. I had, I, I had been I had gone through some processes mm -hmm. <laughs> being on jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, well, let me get my life together. I was really, I was like, so fine. I can't go to nursing school through this way. I'll go through nursing school a different way. And I went and I looked at all the options. At that time, I was seeing a chiropractor. He was, he was my physician, not like I was dating him. I wasn't, mm -hmm. he was my, my doctor. Mm -hmm. And I went to him because from the time that Malik was four until the time he was 17, people had told me I was bipolar. So I had a 13-year span of people telling me that I was bipolar. Doctors, 
nurses who weren't qualified, but they felt like they they can Mm -hmm. give their opinion. And I said, I'm going to go see this guy. I had been passing him at work for, you know, passing on my way to work two and a half years. And I went to him and he said, you know, you have thyroid problems. I was like, yes, I know I have thyroid problems because I've been told that before. He said, but you have no adrenal function. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. He was like, you're always in fight and flight. You have a sympathetic dominance problem. And I was like, okay. He said, so if you put the two together where you have low drive, low thyroid, and you have high drive, adrenals, fight and flight, you know, the bear's chasing me, you look like you're bipolar. Mm. And I said, I want to do this. So now you had an official diagnosis. I had something that made sense to me. I didn't care mm-hmm. if it was a diagnosis or not, mm-hmm. because for 13 years, I told those people, I don't have that. That's not what I have. Uh, something is wrong, but it's not that. I'm not going to be on any pills. I don't want to do that. I'll just suffer until I find the answer. And in three months' time, he put me on some supplements. He adjusted me, and my adrenals went back to regular my thyroid got better mm-hmm. and I, I had clarity. And I was like, he's like, I was like, I want to do this. He said, well, then go down to school and apply. And I did. And I got it in three weeks. I had been on the nursing list for two and a half years. Mm. And that's when you know you're supposed to be someplace else in life. Right, right. And so that's how I, I, that's why I call it a windfall because it wasn't what I had set out to do despite people telling me for decades you're going to be a doctor. I was like, I couldn't imagine that. I worked with these people, doctors every day, Mm -hmm. in and out, three three doctors or four doctors a day sometimes. And I was just like, pager, drugs, time taken up, call? Oh, no, I'm not doing that. That's, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I'm just not, mm, no. Not doing that. Mm-hmm. And then when I became a chiropractor, they're like, we told you you're going to be a doctor. I was like, well, this makes sense. Like not being bipolar made sense right. to mm-hmm. me. I said, because I took, I was basically 27 years into having a residency, mm-hmm. if you will. Right. And I, studied all these herbs and essential oils before these proprietary companies came out with essential oils and and we're using them Mm -hmm. and you can do so much with them now and listening to people and figuring out what their problems were. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. I could do that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And that's how I became a chiropractor. I was like, it was a windfall. I was like, okay, I'll go down there. I'll apply. I got in. He was like, you got in. I was like, I mean, yeah. I went down there on the fly. <laughs> like, you and I have all this experience. It only makes sense. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is um, along the way, I feel like life shows you, you know, little doors that you should be going through. But when I when I applied to the University of Texas in Arlington, they have a nursing program. The lady who interviewed me, she said, "How come you didn't go to medical school?" I, I was like, "I don't want to do that." Mm-hmm. She's like, "Okay." Um, we'll put you on our waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> and that traditional route is not for everyone. Oh, no, you know? no, no. I went to school when I was 40. I went to school, chiropractic school when I was 40. I'm almost, wow. I'm almost 50. So it's never too late. And there is a time and a season. I didn't want to do something so vigorous, raising a child mm-hmm. and being away from him. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a single parent and that just wasn't a good life right? for for my situation. Mm-hmm. For other people's situation, be encouraged. You want to do that? Go and do that. But for me, it wasn't a good situation. So um, going back to school at 40, I was just like, okay, <laughs> this is the, because I never wanted to be fired again. Mm-hmm. And that was the other thing. I was like, I need a job where nobody will ever fire me again. Right. <laughs> and I was like, this makes sense. I could eventually be my own boss. Right. Right. <laughs> and so that's that was a that was one of the pillars that make me oppose what my previous thoughts about being a doctor mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. So now you're a doctor mm-hmm. and then you go and you open up your own practice. So now you're an entrepreneur as well. 
So what inspired you to do that? Tell yeah, me I more about your yeah, journey. Mm-mm. I wasn't supposed to be that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you how I got here. I tried to open up, a, not tried, I opened up a, a small practice mm-hmm. when I was in Dallas. And I, I didn't know technical things about business. Mm-hmm. I knew to get an EI in. That was it. <laughs> I knew right. you had to have equipment. I knew the technology part of being a, a chiropractor or, or being a physician or being in business, period. Um, and I was doing okay. And then all my patients stopped coming, and I was like, what in the world is going on, God? And for about three months, I, I laid on the floor and I cried because I was like, Everybody says I'm so gifted and talented at this and that I'm such a <laughs> that mm-hmm. I'm such a intuitive. I don't understand where are the people. <laughs> if I'm so great and not great by my words and I don't mm-hmm. want to sound arrogant, but people are like, "Man, you you can you can see, you know, we you resolve these problems." Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I mean, okay. And now I have no patience. Nobody is coming. And I'm praying. I'm praying every day. I'm like, mm-hmm. Jesus, you know, I'm crying and praying. I'm eating chicken and chips and <laughs> I'm praying. I'm laying on the floor. I mean, right. I was a mess because I was like, this is something that I'm good at mm-hmm. with ease. Mm-hmm. And, and you I love doing it. And I want to help so many mm-hmm. people. I just want to help. Every day I was like, who can I help again? <laughs> who can I help in right. the people? And um, the Holy Spirit said, move. I was like, broken car, no money, no patience. Toilet paper math, I can't do that. <laughs> you know? And and then well, a friend of mine, she really, really helped me. She's like, I'm going to come get you. I could help you. And we did some therapy things for four months. Mm-hmm. Her name is God of Sierra, and she's on in Maryland. And... We worked through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And we do. While we were working, we were also creating. She was like, what is the name of your business going to be? You know, you need to have a look as a doctor. And she was kind of re-transforming my brain Mm -hmm. and helping me get through some health issues. But most importantly, helping me get through some emotional issues. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of four months, we finished the treatment and... I came back home. All my patients came and saw me. A guy, he was like, I could get you a car. And I moved here in January. But while I was in training, I was looking, I was looking on Facebook and getting connected with different people. And there was a man who was going to hire me in this city. So I was supposed to work for a person. And we had been doing this dance from November until February. And in February, he's like, when you first applied for this job, I didn't have any options. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and now I have a few more options. Do you? Oh. I'm like, um, no. It's like, you were plan A and plan B and plan C. <laughs> it's like, I was supposed to make some money so right. I could open up a practice. Mm-hmm. But God has a way of doing what just only God can do. Mm-hmm. I moved here on the 24th. I started networking on the 27th. I met a guy who said to me, I know somebody that I think you would be a perfect um, partner with. Mm -hmm. He's like, let me introduce you. So I called her and she was like, yeah, come on. You know, I would, I love for you to come and join me at my wellness center. So Claudine Malcolm uh, opened up a door for me Mm -hmm. and she's like, I'll give you a space. I was like, listen, let's discuss this space thing right now because I don't have any patience. I don't have any money and mm-hmm. I can't pay you. I promise. In February, I had zero patients. <laughs> I made no dollars in February of last <laughs> year. And um, that's how I got started because I had one back and forth for all of February because I made no dollars. So I saw no patients. And, uh, and I was like, I think I'm going to work for this guy. I'm not going to work for this guy. I think I'm going to work for this guy. And she's like, okay, whatever you decide. She was so patient because I was like, circling mm-hmm. the drain about this right. until he made the decision for me. And I was like, okay. And so I was like, great. Um, now I have this room, my table, my East stem. Cause when I was in school, they told me you are not going to get a job. And I was like, no, see, I just paid, I just signed off for this mm-hmm. loan. I got to get a job. 
Mm -hmm. They say, you're not going to get a job. And so many professors told me, they said, you're a natural. Mm -hmm. Like what you do, you're natural. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really hard for you to get a job. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if this be true, like I don't believe it, but if it be true, I better get me some things before Mm -hmm. I I, I graduate from school. So I did that. So that's what I moved here with. That two suitcases of books and some, and a suitcase of clothes. Mm -hmm. That's what I moved here with. And in March, I started getting patients. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to be Pinpoint Chiropractic. I had a name picked out, but I had a name picked out for 2022. Mm -hmm. And God was like, nope, I need you to see these people. And I was like, (laughs) okay, sir. All right. (laughs) I'm in God's army now. (laughs) And that's such an amazing journey. Like sometimes what we think we should be doing is not what God has in mind at all. You know? But I'm going to tell you a little secret, and I promise you it's true. I couldn't figure out why I kept getting fired. Um, and, and I don't know if you're a Bible believer, but I'm oh, a Bible absolutely, believer. Oh, absolutely, 100%. The Word of God says, um, write the vision down as a herald on a tablet for all to see. Mm-hmm. And later on in my career, I, I had some misunderstandings about my personality. Mm-hmm. And so that seemed to sometimes put people in a in a way of thinking, in a different thinking pattern. And every day I would write down, I'm not going to do this for very long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do something else. I'm going to be my own boss. And I wrote that on my back table. You can have sterile pens in the OR, and I'm writing on the sterile table with the mm-hmm. sterile pen. I'm not going to keep doing this. And then it was a matter of time before I got fired. I was like, why are you fired? <laughs> so, you know, I was developing this faith pattern, right. but I wasn't following through with the faith pattern. And... And then um, I always knew that I would be an entrepreneur because I had been an entrepreneur when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. When I was when I was in high school, I was sewing clothes for people and alterating and doing and doing um, catering. I'd, it took me a long time to figure out I was going to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. I did um, photography. I mean, I had always had an entrepreneur mind right. because right. I was a creative and a learner mm-hmm. more than anything. I did not go to school for everything that I learned before I went to school Mm -hmm. to do what I do. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so when I wasn't getting hired, because I wasn't getting hired in Dallas, which is why I was working on my little apartment and seeing patients. And then I moved here and that guy was like, no, we're not going to hire you. We have some other options. I was like, I'm not ready for this. I have no dollars. I don't have fancy equipment. Excuse me. All I have is my brain, this table, this e stem, and this activator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and ever since then, I mean, I came here running. I had I and I did interview for other jobs, and they were just like lowballing me. Mm-hmm. Um, the low ball that they were lowballing me is what I almost made last year, and I was like, I could do that by myself, right? <laughs> so, right. no, mm-hmm. but thank you, but no, and then um. I just didn't want to struggle, Mm -hmm. which is not realistic as an entrepreneur, right? Yep. And I didn't want to do that because I felt like I had already struggled so much before I became a doctor. I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, instantly, I was an entrepreneur because I was making my own money, finding my own leads, my own patients, networking, um, and coming up with processes and systems and all the things that make a business a business. And it didn't happen. I didn't have all those things before I had those things. And I'm still working on them now, you know. And um, I love it. Mm-hmm. No, I, I love it. I, and I'm not like, oh, you know, I don't have any worry. No, I'm realistic. I was like, yeah, I have worry. You know, I was like, you know, winter's coming up, Jesus. You know, you gonna make it snow so some people. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do worry because mm-hmm. I'm human. But in my humanness, I'm like I. It's an honor to be. It's a privilege to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. because you provide a service for people, right? And not everybody gets to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's such an amazing journey. You know what they always say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what your plans are. Okay. <laughs> He'll be like, uh-huh. He's like, oh, girl, I got something for you. I'm right. This one. I'm sorry. So jumping into chronic pain, um, 
this is a relevant topic because a lot of us, when we experience pain in our bodies or something's not quite right, we go to our doctor, the first thing they want to do is prescribe pills. Um, I went to the doctor recently because I had, like, out of nowhere, just anxiety. And I never have had that in my entire life. And the first thing she wanted to do was put me on, like, Xanax. And I was like, so you're not going to check anything else? Or <laughs> we're not going to do any other medical tests to make sure there's nothing else going on? Um, so I think it's very important for us to really understand that there are all alternative ways, you know, than just pills, you know, to actually deal with the problem. So I'm really glad you're here to discuss this. Um, so I did a little bit of research. I'm not a doctor. Don't judge me. I'm not going to judge you. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> so when I did the research, I discovered that there's actually four different types of pain, right? So there's like nociceptive pain, which is like tissue injuries, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have inflammatory pain, neuropathic pain, so pain of the nerves, then functional pain. And that's pain where there's not like an obvious origin of where that's coming from. Um, Good. I'm sorry. Functional pain is when your body's not functioning right. So your gallbladder's not acting right, you get your bladder taken out, right? Mm -hmm. That's functional pain. Idiopathic pain is you don't know where it comes from. Is that what it is? Okay. Mm -hmm. I was close. You were, I was, no, I, I was, was in the vicinity. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. you, you got the home run. You slid right on in there. I did. I sure <laughs> did. <laughs> but I don't, I wanted, I, I, I want people to understand as you're explaining your research that idiopathic pain is not always, idiopathic pain could be all of those. It could be in those four subcategories mm -hmm. and you don't know where it came from. It just showed up one day. It just mm -hmm. said, you know what? I'm going to move in. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, well, no, what happened? Mm -hmm. Right. So idiopathic pain is a type of pain where um, there is no origin of it. Nobody knows where it came from, why it came. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, again, a lot of us, we go to our doctors, and the first thing they want to do is prescribe pills. And I, even before, like, the laws changed, like, they were prescribing narcotics like <laughs> like it was candy Girl. Um, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um so why is it really important for people to understand their diagnosis um, and alternative options before, you know, taking pills or deciding to have a surgery? A diagnosis is a starting point. It is not the end all. Do you understand what I mean? Explain. 13 years, people said I was bipolar. Mm -hmm. It was a starting point. It was something to get me thinking about I had something or something was wrong or there was something disruptive. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the end all. Because every person that was on the inside of them, they can bear witness to what is true and what is not. Right. So one can go to a doctor and they can say, this is your diagnosis. And if it doesn't bear witness to you, then you get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right. And so a diagnosis to me is a starting point where a person is is brought to their attention professionally that something is going on with their body. Mm -hmm. And then they could decide what they want to do about it. Mm -hmm. As far as after you get this diagnosis, do I take pain pills? Is that the second part of this question? Um, no. <laughs> um, so, you know, why is it important to understand, you know, alternative options? To oh, surgery? alternative options is because, um, w you take one or two routes. <laughs> Thanks. Right. You take one or two routes. You believe the report of what the physician says, and he may not be wrong, but he could be, or she may be wrong or may not be wrong, but she could be. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it bears, if it doesn't bear witness to you, then you want to figure out. I want to go somewhere else. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you, um, many of the patients that I've seen and that I do see have been to doctors and have had diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And even if their diagnosis is correct, it's limiting. Right. And so I have a lady that I'm seeing currently, and she was in a very, um, 
she was in the, she had some trauma happen to her mm-hmm. and she has chronic pain every day. And she said to me the other day, which blew my mind because patients don't always tell you everything up front. And she said to me, before I came to see you, I thought I would be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. She said, I drove home one day and I kind of, and I must have bumped the wheelchair. It was in my garage and it followed me out of the garage. Mm -hmm. And I said, this must be a sign from the Lord that I will be in a wheelchair my whole entire life. And I was like, no, no, that's a sign to put the wheelchair out to the garbage. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Let's take that back out. (laughs) Let's change the side, right? Um, and she does have a diagnosis. And do I believe that diagnosis? Yes, I do. But what I can help her with today is how to manage it, not on pain pills, mm-hmm. or even how to manage your pain pills. And some of it is some of it is herbs, and some of it is essential oils, or some of it is um, different techniques that one uses in chiropractic, and some of it is just good old traditional medicine Mm -hmm. from way, way, way millennial back in the day ago Mm. that we don't view as valid today. Mm -hmm. And so that's when people come to alternative medicine. They're like, I've tried what the modern, I call it modern medicine. I tried what the modern medicine said to do. I'm on these pain pills or I'm still in pain and it's not working. And then they come and they go to an acupuncturist. They get massages. They come to a chiropractor, come to a chiropractor, mm-hmm. or they come to a chiropractor. And, <laughs> and then they get different information. Mm-hmm. And that different, different information helps them in ways that the modern medicine didn't. Mm-hmm. So they get a choice. Do I want to be on pills or do I want to try something that probably won't put me on another pill or eight pills or 16 pills? I have a guy I saw. He was taking 16 pills when he first came and saw me. I was like, we got to get you off this stuff. Right. This stuff will kill your liver. And although you can get a liver transplant, a liver transplant is $58,000 for the procedure, not the maintenance of it after you get one. Oh, so there's maintenance behind that too. Pills for the rest of your life. Right. And the day that you miss a pill will be the day that you could be sick and you could die. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, hey, so how about we just, let's just figure out how to get these mm-hmm. other things, these, these conditions that you're on at bay. You know, after seeing him, you know, I was like, hey, you know, tell me about how's your cholesterol doing? He's like, my cholesterol numbers are so they, I mean, they're still a little, they're not where the doctor exactly wants them to be, but I am telling you, they are <laughs> lower. I am like, and I was just like, the body has the power to heal itself. Mm-hmm. It does. Because God said that he gave us everything in life and godliness that we need to succeed. So mm-hmm. we know. Yes. We can bear witness that our bodies can heal itself. Mm-hmm. That's why people choose alternative care. They think it's like, voodoo (laughs) or they don't understand the mechanisms Mm -hmm. of it but it's just the lack of understanding and some of it is some of it is miraculous if you want to say because when when a patient comes and sees me and they apply their faith to what I do now we have a three-way agreement a three-fold cord that is not going to easily be broken because you believe your faith right and you believe what I'm going to do and then you become willing to do and mix the three together. Mm. Does that make sense? Right. But there's a lot of science behind chiropractic, and people don't understand that there's science because not, I feel like not enough of the message of chiropractic is out there. And it's a lot of movement, body work. It's a lot of working with the nervous system. People think I'm going to the chiropractor to get my back adjusted, to get out of pain, and the adjustment is just the motion that the body needs for the nervous system to work it's a domino effect Mm -hmm. i adjust you and then it's aligned click and then the nervous system is aligned so it begins to send the right messages like it rolls Mm -hmm. the films right and when it does that then the nervous system sends the signals the hormonal signals he'll send these hormones down here to heal this part of the body Mm -hmm. and when you can do that 
then the body begins to heal itself. So I just recently wrote an ebook called um, Things Doctors Don't Tell You, mm-hmm. How to Manage Chronic Pain. And one of the things that I say is when you laugh, when you laugh, are you in pain? No. When you watch a comedy movie, are you ever in pain? No. When you hug your mama, are you in pain? No. When you um, blow bubbles, are you in pain? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's things that, there are hormones that make us happy mm-hmm. that heal our body. So tell me more about that. So as I was reading your bio, I kind of realized you're a very well-rounded doctor. So it's not just about chiropractic, but no. then there's nutrition, there's oh, yeah. emotion, there's oh, yeah. faith. That's all part of absolutely the wellness. Yeah. So tell me about more about your thought process with that. My thought process is, so I'm going to put this disclaimer on here. <laughs> chiropractic works to a point. I wouldn't spend 30 years on surgery if I didn't believe that surgery didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't spend 30 years in a modern medical system if I didn't think it was necessary. That's my disclaimer. Mm -hmm. However, there are a lot of things that the body could do for itself. Say, you did gymnastics. This is is just an example. You did gymnastics and you fell off the balance beam or one of the common things that happen for a gymnast if they do the balance beam is they sometimes fall on the balance beam, split leg, Mm. and they hurt their genitalia. And they, you know, dust off because it's like, you know, you're a kid, it's okay, you know, it's part of being a gymnast. But then maybe... Fast forward 20 years later, she has trouble getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever put those two things together. Mm. Or maybe if they do a cervical exam at the time that she's ready to bear a baby and there's scar tissue there, nobody would ever put those two things together. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at the history of the patient because sometimes the patient could be in pain today, but not realize that pain came, the root cause of the pain came from something that they did 10 years ago Mm -hmm. or 15 years ago or happened when they were a kid. Right. Um, I'm going to write another ebook called uh, The Pillow's Not the Problem because people come all the time and they say, you know, Dr. Penn, what's a good pillow? You know, I didn't, I slept wrong last night. My shoulder hurts and my neck hurts. and, And I was like, I believe that happened to you last night. And let's do a little bit more investigating because sometimes it could just be your pillow is the problem. But in other instances, it could be that something happened. Maybe you injured your shoulder a long time ago that you thought wouldn't disturb your sleep last night. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through the methodology and find the root causes of why people are in pain. I'm taking this long way around because I want to show how that pain could be there for a really long time before you ever feel it. Mm-hmm. And the moment that you feel it, then you go to the doctor and you say, I'm in pain. And, and they say, here's this prescription. Right. When you go to a chiropractor or you do alternative medicine, they will say, what is your pain? When did it start? And they go through the whole history and physical and they'll do more investigating to find out if something actually happened to you. Were you in a car wreck? Did you play sports? Did you bump yourself into a wall? You were, did you fall down the steps? You know, you thought it was nothing. And people throw those instances away every day. Mm-hmm. I was like, did you ever fall? No, I never fell. Did you ever hurt your ankle? No, I never hurt my ankle. Okay. And then I do some ortho test and I was like, oh, okay. Are, are you sure? <laughs> because mm-hmm. this ortho test, which is a scientific proven technique, says that you kind of ru- you hurt your ankle years ago. And then they start thinking, you know what I did? I actually bumped my Achilles. And I remember it hurting for a, a couple of weeks. And I just went to work. Didn't think anything of it. But now you can't feel your big toe. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm right. saying? And so once 
people understand that a chiropractic is a science and that it does work because it's scientific based, then they will take that option. Now, the lady who's in pain every day, I have to work her muscles every day. Mm -hmm. And once I work her muscles, which is myofascial work, she's like, it feels better. And then her pain goes down. So she doesn't have to take pain pills. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's different ways that we come to the how to resolve it. Mm -hmm. So working with your muscles is one way. How do I get to the point where I say you need this herb or you need this essential oil is based on what you, what my patient tells me. My patient comes in and tells me, um, I have hives. And I'm like, okay, when'd you get them? How long you had them? Mm -hmm. And they say, uh, I, I've had them for two months. I went to this doctor, this doctor, this doctor. And I said, did you get bit by a bug? And they're like, no, I didn't get bit by a bug. I was like, are you sure? And they're like, well, I don't recall getting bit by a bug. But just because you can't recall mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. You need to be on this herb. You need to take these things. Mm -hmm. And then they come back and they're like, two months I've had this. I saw you for a week. What is going on? <laughs> Talk of other doctors don't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, medicine is built on al algorithms. If, if and thens. Right. If you have this, then you need this. If you have this, then it must be this. If you have this, does it follow this pattern? Or does it follow this pattern? If it follows this pattern, then you need this. Chiropractic is me talking to you. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with you? Right. Are you in pain? I am in pain. They say I have anxiety problems. I would agree with that. Because you're in pain, mm -hmm. right? Does that make sense? Right. And as I'm talking to you, which is what modern medicine is missing, is the conversation with the patient. Right. Not just, I can resolve your problem. Sometimes I'll talk to a person for about 45 minutes before it's settled within me and I said, I know how to help you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, um, sometimes people look at, Chiropractic as a last resort. I tried everything else. I might as well. What do I have to lose? What do you have to gain? Mm -hmm. Because what I learned the last few years of being in surgery is that a lot of total joints and a lot of the things that we did with, with um, sports, ortho, um, sport, sports orthopedics as well as total joints is 85% of it is preventable. So if you can figure out what to do to prevent it, then you wouldn't have to have a $68,000 bill at the end of your life with pain pills mm -hmm. because you could fix it when it happens or you can fix it by seeing a chiropractor. You could, you can get maintenance. You don't have to buy into a $20,000 plan. You could just say, you know, I want to come to keep my body aligned to make sure my nervous system is working well. Mm -hmm. But if you have chronic pain and you don't want to be in pain pills, you might want to always get that jump start in your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so my philosophy is let's find the root cause. After we find the root cause, let us give you some tools. Sometimes patients come to me in so much pain. I was like, what's your favorite comedy? I want you to go home and watch that. Mm -hmm. That's my prescription. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> of course, now I do look like a quack. Mm -hmm. But what I understand comedy to do is a healing process because, once again, the Word of God already told us that medicine, laughters make merry like good medicine. Mm -hmm. Go home and laugh. What it scientifically does is it gives us endorphins, dopamines, serotonins mm. that heal our body. There's a science to it. Wow. So that's one thing that I do. Mm-hmm. Hydration. A lot of people drink a lot of water. There's so many kinds of waters out there. I am not endorsing this, but this is what I drink. I drink Kagan water because it's not a fortified water. They're not adding minerals to it. They're energizing it. The body is an electric magnetic machine. And Can you so explain what Kagan water is. I will. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm, mm -hmm. I am. I'm a, <laughs> so Kagan water is a water that is uh, 
it is electrolyzed. It mm-hmm. it by by tech, by different plates, titanium, um, platinum plates they put in this machine, and it makes the electrolytes. So, I'll give you the example. When lightning hits water, it energizes the water, which is why we have to wear rubber boots. Right. Correct? Mm -hmm. That's what Kagan water does to the body. Why that is important is because uh, the body works off of signaling, as I told you before. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes the cells will be full of, you can't get past the cell barrier because Mm -hmm. it's full. But if it has a negative and a positive, the cell could be full of positive, like acid. And then once you, once the negative water gets through the cell wall, then it begins to normalize. It becomes um, neutral. Mm -hmm. And that's, and so Kagan water is a, uh, it's a, it's a machine that produces different types of water for different reasons. 9.5 is what I drink. People go buy alkaline water that is fortified with magnesium, chloride, and different types of minerals. And those waters, um, the body has to decide, do I need chlorine? Do I need magnesium? Do I need potassium or whatever they put in the water? And if the if the body doesn't need it, then it gets rid of it. Mm-hmm. But when it's ele- when it is electric current the body doesn't the body needs electric current to be balanced right and that's what kagan water is oh okay that's why i drink it because i don't have to worry about a salt mm-hmm. that my body might not need people uh, i heard this guy say he had acid reflux for a really long time then he started drinking this water then he didn't have acid reflux but he drank bottled water every day So I talk about hydration, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, and I talk about drinking water because mm-hmm. that's how the body hydrates. The body, the fruits and vegetables give you electrolytes to hold the water and water hydrates you. Right. Then I talk about food is the medicine. Let thy food be thy medicine. Mm. Takes 12 to 30 minutes for your body to decide if it is good for you or if it's bad for you the food you eat or whatever you put in your mouth. Right. So it doesn't have to be food. It could be cigarettes Mm -hmm. because they have a nutritional value. Mm -hmm. It could be um, gum. Mm -hmm. You're not eating it, but it has a nutritional value. And your body might not like the gum you're chewing. Mm -hmm. You might feel tired while you're chewing the gum. (laughs) Right. And so it's what you put in your body that the body begins to say, this is good for me, this is not bad, this is not good for me, or this is neutral. And when people begin to pay attention to that, they can work their inflammatory process. Because foods that's not good for you will make your body inflame. Mm-hmm. Foods that's good for you, food that is good for you, will help your body recover and restore itself. I talk about having a team. I feel like this is so important in having chronic pain and I I don't want to just say chronic pain but a chronic condition like a condition that just doesn't go away because people will think that you're crazy oh you're always talking about that problem you know you're always talking about how you're constipated and you can never go you know oh we're so tired of hearing about I just use constipation as an example and it's like okay I'm constipated you know when you go to the doctor and they put you on all these things but you're still constipated only to find out that maybe you can't eat bread but you've been eating pasta and you don't look at it like it's bread, but it's made of the same thing. Does that make sense? Right. So you have to have a personal team and a professional team. And your personal team is like the people who are like, I support you, T. You know, it's going to be OK. Or, you know, have you tried this? Or I did some research. Go to this doctor. Or, you know, and they're and they're helping. They're helping you in ways or they're supporting you. They're giving you a hug at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And then you need a professional team for every time a doctor diagnoses you with something, you write it down what medications they give you, you write it down. Because now what you're doing is you're building your history log for Mm. the next physician. If that doesn't work, then say, this is what the last physician said I had. And this is the medication he put me on. Mm -hmm. And this, the medication didn't work. This is why I feel it didn't work. And the, there will come, there will, a physician will come along and say, oh, I see. Because now they could rule out. I said, this is what I think is wrong with you. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. And that's, um, and I talk about the power of the mind because as you have described the four different categories of pain, the brain doesn't really care. Right. It just says, you're in pain. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is the physician that cares because they need to figure out where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And so the brain is like, you're in pain. You could be in emotional pain and it will make your body hurt. That's true. Mm -hmm. You could be in spiritual pain, laying on the floor, eating chicken, having chips, because (laughs) you have a purpose Mm -hmm. and you're not doing it. It will still cause your body pain. Right. Or you can have mental pain. You make me sick. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I have a tummy ache. Well, you just told your body that that person makes you sick. Get a stomach ache. Mm -hmm. So the body doesn't really care where the pain comes from and we have to begin telling ourselves what we want Mm -hmm. i want to be well the lady with the issue of blood she said i didn't spend all my money on all these doctors who didn't know what they're saying i heard about a man who's coming to galilee all i need to do is just touch him and his garment she had the faith she changed her mind because faith is about changing your mind even in your health Mm. it's about believing something that you don't see until you see it so i talked to my Patients about, you know, how they think. I had a patient tell me the other day, she's like, I'm starting a journal. It's called, part of my vernacular, <laughs> it's called Sick Bitch Journal. I was like, let's <laughs> change the name of that journal. <laughs> That's not very positive. <laughs> I was like, you could be a bitch. I don't, you know, I don't have any problem about that. <laughs> but can we make it like healed bitch in the, you know, right. you know, can we change it? Because if you tell your body that you're always sick, your body will always be, your body will do exactly what you tell it to do. Mm-hmm. And that's even if you take medicine or pills or whatever. If you don't believe it's going to work, then why would you do it? Mm-hmm. Why would you go see that doctor? It doesn't matter who the doctor is. Mm-hmm. Modern medicine, alternative medicine, it doesn't matter. If you don't believe it's not going to work, why would you go and see them? Mm-hmm. If you believe it's going to work, then do what they say, even if it's outlandish. Now, I told the patient, I want you to watch I Love Lucy every day. And she was like, okay. I said, you know, how'd you do with your homework? She was like, I did it. I said, how did you feel? She was like, well, it was funny. I was like, how was your pain? She was like, oh. She didn't even, she wasn't even thinking about it. Now she was in chronic pain every day, all day. Mm -hmm. But when she watched I Love Loosely, she didn't know that she was in pain. She had a belief that it could work, even if it was a little odd. Patch Adams, that's what he did with the kids. If you remember that movie, Patch Adams, I don't know if that's before your time. It's Maybe. a Robert, <laughs> it's a Robin Williams movie, but mm-hmm. it was about a doctor who, um, he was brilliant. He saw uh, children who had cancer and um, he was very smart and he hardly, it looked like in the movie that they made it look like he didn't really go to the classes and all those kinds of things, but you have to, but anyway. Um, but when he got to the clinical part, he was doing all the traditional things and the children weren't getting better. And then he brought clowns in and balloons in and he made them laugh and they got better. Mm -hmm. And he did that. He, 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 after he graduated, he, um, did a free clinic. He didn't care. He did a free clinic because he understood the same thing that I understand today. I can't have a free clinic. Sorry. But right. he understood that people needed care. They weren't getting the care that they were that they needed because the doctors were giving them pills. Mm-hmm. And they, and he did a lot of natural therapies. And there have been lots of natural therapies that have gone before time, but they just didn't pass legislation. Mm. And so if I tell you, drink carrot juice, and it'll help you. You can't really capitalize off of carrot juice. Right. But if I tell you, take this Renal, which is a form of vitamin A, and you need this, but it has the same thing that carrot juice has, I can make money off of that. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes patients end up with 
16 pills of medicine because it's profitable. Mm -hmm. And then because that is a modern way of being treated, you go to a chiropractor or you go to a different alternative medicine provider, physician, and they say, this is how much it's going to cost. And the patient says, this is too much. It's not profitable for the alternative physician. Mm -hmm. So people oftentimes don't do that. Right. But I promise you, five years of being on 800 milligrams of Motrin every day will lend you to a $58,000 bill for a liver transplant if you qualify. Mm -hmm. Plus maintenance. And so people have to choose their care. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And people sometimes don't look at the value down the road of time. You, know, you don't have to always see a chiropractor. You see a chiropractor like a treatment plan, just like you would take medicine for an antibiotic for seven days to ten days. You see a chiropractor for a treatment plan that's going to end or bring a medical resolution at the end of it. Right. And most of the time it's your decreased pain, you're sleeping better, you're painting your toenails, you're walking your dog, mm -hmm. you're dancing again. Right. Because those are the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. You can't always do that when you're on pain medication. So finding the root problem is what is the what's very important to me. Mm -hmm. It could be it could it could you could just really have a bad night's sleep. I could tell you when's the last time you changed your pillow. I've had this pillow for 20 years. You're supposed to change your pillow every year at least. Mm -hmm. You have a pillow 20 years old, strong in this game, <laughs> and you don't have neck pain. Okay, I, hey, I'm not going to judge you on that. You love that pillow? Okay, great. Uh, see chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so one of the things I kind of noticed, like when we go to our doctor and we say, um, I have pain, I have abdominal pain, or you know, it's in my stomach. That's all I know. Um, with some doctors, it's just guesswork. It's kind of what I've learned where they just say, well, let's try this. We'll see if it goes away and let's try this. Um, how can we help our doctor? Because sometimes we don't always know how to articulate what we're feeling to the doctor in a way that they understand what might be going on to help get a proper diagnosis. Um, what can we do to make that easier as patients? I want to understand this question. We talked about this on the way here. So you go to your doctor and you say, I have abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. And your doctor says, what does your doctor say? I have abdominal pain. Um, she'll probably say, well, where is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, it's right here. Mm -hmm. And she'll say, oh, you have a gallbladder problem. Right? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That and you're or... like, no, I, that's not my problem. Right. And that's what you're trying to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you want to help the doctor understand you a little bit better. Right. The best thing I can tell you is be fervent. Just keep your message clear, what you're saying to your doctor. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So self-advocacy, basically. I'm, I am big for self-advocacy. Patients come into my office and they say, the doctor said blah, blah, blah. I said, now you go back and you tell him these words or you tell her these words. Mm -hmm. These are the words you need to say to that doctor about what is wrong with you. Mm -hmm. I can get it better than the ballpark. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, can, I can get you out of the dugout. Right. To get them started, mm -hmm. right? But self-advocacy is very important because we go to these doctors and we trust them because they've gone to school to do this. They don't always look at all of the history. And so maybe you want to share more of the history with them. Maybe the patient would like to say, uh, I don't believe it's mm -hmm. this gallbladder pain because then it travels all the way over here. Right. So maybe you want to tell them more about how the pain pattern works. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If it stays in one place or if it goes someplace else, maybe you want to share that information with them so that they won't just be like, oh, it's here. Oh, this is what you have. Right. Because that is the most apparent 
area that the pain could be caused. And so um, self-advocacy is what I would be fervent, 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 fervent. I was not a physician yet. I was not an advanced OR tech, and I was a young single parent. I was dating a guy, and I didn't want to be on birth control because I have uh, I have a chronic condition, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to be on birth control. Right. And I remember having abdominal pain, but I had forgotten about the condition that I had. And the lady, the doctor who I had only seen like one other time, she said, oh, you must be pregnant. I was like, I am not <laughs> pregnant. And she didn't listen to me. She mm-hmm. said, oh, we're going to take a CAT scan. She's like, it's not going to hurt the baby. We're going to put um, we're going to put some lead over you or whatever they were doing, uh, whatever modality they were using. And when the results came back, guess what? I wasn't pregnant, mm-hmm. but I was. Fer- I, you have to stay fervent. You have to be affirm in what you're saying because sometimes doctors will make you think you're crazy. That's true. And then your friends will make you think you're crazy because they said, "Well, that's what the doctor said." You're like, "But it didn't just bear witness to me." So you have to be true and understanding. You are the captain of this body, and you have to keep on getting the answer that you need mm-hmm. until it bears witness with you. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Somebody will come along and give you the right answer. I know that's maybe not the best, you know, I want this one doctor to resolve what my problem is. But I've seen a patient who's had a condition her whole entire life, and they told her she had arthritis at eight. I was like, doubt it. Unless you mm-hmm. have these two particular things, doubt it. And she was like, I hurt all the time. I was like, you know, then I began asking her, right? You're right. Well, she had been through all these other people, but she stayed fervent. That's what I like about her. She stayed fervent. She was like, no, here, here. These things happen all the time. They're happening to me. And mm-hmm. I, and she did think she was going a little bit crazy, but she stayed fervent. And I was like, honey, you ain't crazy. You got a condition, and this is what it is. And she was like, first time somebody's ever told something to me. Mm. But when you stay fervent, you'll find the person who will, you'll find the doctor, the you'll find a person who can bear witness so that you can go to the doctor and say, this is what I believe I have. Right. So just stay, staying fervent and giving them more information about the pain patterns is how patients can advocate for themselves, but also help the doctor figure out what's wrong with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this is all really good information. We're running up on time. I feel like every single time I have a podcast, like it's just I look at the clock and it's boom, it's time to be done. But um, so even just through this discussion, I've learned so much no just wonder. about the different types of pain, other ways to attack it. And also the fact that a lot of it can just be in our mindset, too. And we have to have faith and believe that we're going to be healed from whatever condition that we have. Um, so but there's a science behind it. <laughs> oh, is there? Well, tell me more. Tell me about I was like, no, there is a, yes, <laughs> you have to change your mindset, but there's a science that needs to heal your body mm. because we're physical beings. Right. So it can't just be about faith. I, I mean, I want people to walk away with, yes, faith, but I also want people to walk away. It is a, it's a combination of things. Right, right. It's not just faith. You have to do the work. Mm-hmm. You can't have faith. And not do the work. So the work is going to see the professional Mm -hmm. to get the starting point. And how it bears witness with you will tell you, do I go modern or do I try something else? (laughs) But they're both science. Mm -hmm. They're both science. Working on muscles is a science. Working, giving a person herbs is how medicine was made before it got to being a pill. Peppermint helps with menstrual cycles. It's an herb. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's always science behind it. Chiropractic, there's a science to chiropractic. There's a science to modern medicine. There's a science to herbs. There's a science to why acupuncture works. But first and foremost, if you don't believe in your mind that you're going to be well, you won't be. Mm. And the science won't work. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. 
So I don't want people like, oh, she talked about just having faith. I have faith. I'm going to be well. <laughs> Got to do the work. Yeah. Child, yes, I, I, I do say that. I was like, you know, you can't, you can't just, you can't just wish for a million dollars. Even if you play the lottery, you got to go and play the lottery. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just wish for the, the. Ed McMahon is not going to come to your door and knock on the door if you didn't fill out the paperwork. Right. Medicine is no different. You can be in your, you can be on your couch or in your kitchen. I, I wish, I hope, I pray that I'm going to be healed in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is like, dude, I sent you a boat. I sent you a rafter. I sent you a helicopter. Now you're dead. How come you didn't follow? Mm -hmm. How come you didn't do the work? Right. There's work to be done in healing. And sometimes it's a long road and it's a lot of work and you have to do the work and have the faith because you could do the work and not have the faith and, and then still get no results. Mm -hmm. Now, when patients come into my office, I know we're running out of time. When, when patients come into my office, I always tell them, what do you want to happen here? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I want to get out of pain. I want to sleep better. I'm like, okay, 12 visits. We can do that. And then what? Is there something that you want to do? And is there something you want to get back to? Mm -hmm. Is there something you'd like to maintain? I want to paint my toenails. I want to walk my dog. I want to dance again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, now I could tell you what that will really look like, how we can recover you, how, and there's a process to it. But during the process, I want you to look for small wins. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you didn't jog four miles but you walked around the block and you haven't been able to do that in years. Right. That's a small win. Mm -hmm. In the small wins is the work. Mm -hmm. And once you tally up enough small wins, you will see a bigger picture. And over time you get enough small wins and then you don't have pain and you sleep better. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, we have talked about so many good things today, and I hope that you're encouraged to, and instead of just taking pills or just going for the surgery, that you seek alternative options. One of the ways you can do that is by going to see my girl, Dr. Penn at Pinpoint Chiropractic. Thank you. Where can we find you on social media? You can find me on Facebook, Pinpoint Chiropractic. You can find me on Instagram, Dr. Penn, Pinpoint Chiro. You can find me on LinkedIn under Dr. Penn. And that's P-E-N-N. P-E-N-N, -N, like mm -hmm. Pennsylvania without Sylvia. <laughs> that was cute. And again, her office is located 3595 East Fountain Boulevard, Suite 200 in Colorado Springs. And thank you so much for coming today. Thank I really you. appreciate you guys. Um so, you know, just in wrapping up the show, again, my listeners, if you haven't already, make sure you rate and review. It does make my podcast more discoverable. Follow and engage with me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Just search for Back and Forth TV and subscribe and follow and like and share and comment, all that good stuff. Also, shout out to Level 4 Studios. They produce my podcast every week. Come and see Kevin. And Kim, if you want to start your own podcast or you need to rent out the studio for whatever reason, um, they're really, really great. One of the best studios in town. Um, with that being said, I always like to close with a scripture. And today we'll be reading Isaiah 12 and 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. And that wraps the show. Thank you, Dr. Penn. Thank and you. I'll see you guys next week.